journalists and the media in general are in a unique position to influence the perceptions and opinions of others. As such, it may be important to monitor their activity when it comes to subjects or events that are of particular importance to you. In this lesson, I'll show you how to isolate the conversation that you're interested in and how to refine it further to just focus on those Twitter accounts belonging to individual journalists and media organizations that are specifically focused on the healthcare industry. Then we'll walk through ways to study who they are, what they're saying, and if there are any trends surfacing from that group. Let's imagine that we work at the National Institutes of Health, NIH, and that it's late summer 2020. The COVID-19 pandemic is still raging, but there's some important news in the fight against it. Over the span of about 30 days, there have been two early phase clinical trials that have published their results, recognizing that healthcare journalists and the news media in general will impact the perception of these results. You want to understand who among those stakeholders are acting as hubs and disseminating this new information on Twitter and what the messaging is. We're gonna use various forms of the term clinical trials to populate our dashboard. So let's start off with just the keyword clinical trial, the keyword clinical trials plural, and then we'll do the same thing with hashtags. We'll take the singular version and the plural. That should be fine. The first results were published on July 14th and the second results on August the 12th. So we'll cover a five week span around, uh, we'll take it from the 14th of July last year as our starting point. And then we'll take it out five weeks until August the 18th. And then we'll try, uh, click on our create button. So you see, there were nearly 400,000 tweets made by almost a quarter million unique individual Twitter accounts during that time, all talking about clinical trials. And this dashboard, because it's so large, actually took almost three minutes to open. But we did a little bit of video editing here to save you the time from having to watch that, but did want you to know, just in case you try and do this on your own. Now, we want to rein in all that just to focus on the journalists and media outlets that specialize in the healthcare space and only when they're tweeting about clinical trials related to COVID-19. So let's set some filters. I'm gonna start out by clicking on add a filter and I'm gonna choose stakeholders. And then I'll select journalist media. These are individuals that work as journalists or in the media industry in general. And I'll scroll down a bit to add organizations media. Those would be news outlets and such, medical journals and so on. Now I'm gonna choose a second filter this time the bio description, because I only want to have tweets coming from those journalists and media outlets that specialize in healthcare. So we're going to look at their Twitter bio itself and we're gonna filter for only when certain words are in the bio that will include their tweets. For example, healthcare, and the alternate spelling of healthcare, two words. maybe pharma or biotech. We can add science and clinical trial, vaccine, COVID, medical. You get the idea. We could keep on going and add probably dozens more words, but this will guarantee us that we're getting pretty focused on those individuals specifically working in the healthcare space. Now I'm gonna add a third and final filter, this time a content filter, word filter. And I'm gonna to choose to only include tweets coming from those parties when they include the word COVID. Now this filter actually looks at strings of letters, not necessarily entire words. So if I filter for COVID, it will capture tweets that use the word COVID or COVID-19 or hashtag COVID-19 and so on. So this kind of covers our bases. Now we're gonna choose run.
Now you see how we removed all the unwanted noise and uncovered just a small fraction of tweets and people that we're interested in. Next, I'm going to skip forward to the influencers report to see who was receiving the most significant attention from this group. And just as I would have hoped, the NIH has a strong representation with three spots in the top five positions. We've got Dr. Francis Collins, the NIH director right here in the second position, and NIAID News, that's Dr. Fauci's office, and right below that, at NIH. That's the main Twitter handle for the office of the director. So we can interpret that as an indicator that NIH is seen as an authority on the subject amongst these journalists and media outlets that are tweeting. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the engaging tweets report so I can see those specific tweets that were resonating the most and to see if there are any trends that I can pick up on. The engaging tweets report will surface those tweets that are receiving the most significant attention and bring them right to the top. And as I'm starting to read through some of these, something catches my eye. Let me switch over to table view so I can more easily point this out. Table view is available on each section of the dashboard, and it takes the more graphical representation of the data and places it into a table format. And you'll notice at the top of each column here, there's actually some filter boxes. This will allow me to do some exploration on the fly. For example, black and Latino people are three times as likely as white people to become infected with COVID-19 and twice as likely to die. But those groups have been less likely to be included in clinical trials. The number one reason black people and brown people don't participate in clinical trials is because nobody asked them. The New England Journal of Medicine writes a perspective piece on racial disproportionality in COVID uh, clinical trials. COVID-19 clinical trials failing to enroll diverse populations despite awareness efforts. And COVID-19 vaccine trials have a diversity problem, our story. This was a known issue by the research teams and by NIH, and there were campaigns aiming to address it. It was a major part of the story that the press picked up on and circulated. And some of the articles being shared spoke to the efforts to improve diversification of the clinical trials and their participants. Moving forward, I'm going to go to the trending articles report. Here I can see specific articles that were most often being shared by this group of journalists and media outlets. And again, I'm happy to see that two of the top three are our own articles published on NAH.gov. And once again, I'm going to leverage the table view. This time, so I can uncover some additional data about the content of these articles. We capture over 2 million links to web content every month. And we have crawlers that go out to the end point of each of those links. Then we'll crawl the body of text on that page and do some content analysis. And if you'll note this column titled Topics, this is where we'll list some of the most frequently used words for each of these articles, minus stop words like and, it, the, etc. And if I click on one of them, like, uh, let's see here, I see NIH, for example, it will filter the list and find other articles that share that same frequently used word. And in this case, I actually found another article, a third one published on NIH.gov that made the list. And right up here, you'll notice we've applied a filter for NIH. If I click on this, I'll release that and bring all the articles back again. We can also, once again, use the filter boxes at the top of each column, like in the article title column. I can type something like diversity, if that's something specific that I'm looking for. Now, I want to do one last thing. I want to go back to the influencer report. 
This time, I'm going to switch from the default simpler rank metric to tweets because I just want to see who these journalists and media outlets are that we're sharing all this information. To do so, I'll pick this gear icon, which is where my options and settings are. And instead of going with the simpler rank default, I'm going to choose tweets. That'll rerun this one report widget. And by default, we'll have a top 100 list of those parties that were tweeting the most during this time. Now we can expand that list if we'd like to. But right up here, I can see on that top 100, there are 62 journalists and 38 media outlets. And if I wanted to know what any one of these were saying, what it was they were tweeting about, I'll pick on Donna here. All I need to do is click on their Twitter handle. Up comes their profile card, and then I can choose the transcript button. And once her transcript populates, I can read through it. I can see what her original messaging was, what tweets she was retweeting from others, articles being shared, and so on. Now, in this exercise, we focused on some very specific stakeholders and on a very narrow subject area. However, the steps that we took can be applied to any stakeholder or any subject. We also centered our focus on a handful of dashboard widgets, but the entire dashboard is filtered for our stakeholder and subject criteria. So depending on your specific objectives, each widget on the dashboard could be helpful in its own way.